what you're producing? Actually, right now I'm working on my own album and wow. my wife's album. Oh. I'm trying to focus on my own right now. Okay, and who have you produced in the past? So, in the past, a lot of people uh, know me as an orchestrator. So, specifically, like even tonight, uh, Tamla Man worked on her, her projects, uh, Fred Hammond, Donna McCurkin, Usher, Mariah Carey, just several artists. So, now you're in the hot seat, working on your piece. Yes. Tell me how that's different, a different tribe. Well, you know, it's actually something that I really do on a regular basis. Uh -huh. is an orchestral album, so it's okay. gonna be instrumental. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. So I, so I'm, I'm finally launching my own orchestra. We've been working on everybody else's albums. It's like, you know what? Let's create something for ourselves. Oh so that's what we're doing gosh. right now. And what's the title of that piece? Right, well, right now it's called "Sing a Song," oh. based off of right. James right. Weldon Johnson's, you know, "Lift Every Voice and Sing." That middle section, "Sing a Song." I'm building that motif and appreciating songs from all of the black history, you know, that just brought us over this far. Oh my gosh, that is so necessary. And, it, and the tradition of gospel, let's talk about that. I mean, from the origins. Yeah, it's, it's very important that we understand where we've come from. This is probably the first generation of musicians and singers who don't know hymns and don't know how to play a blues scale. So things that were normal for the older generation is becoming very, very abnormal for the new generation. So one of the reasons why I, I tend to push back and get us to look at gospel music from the historical standpoint is because I have children and they don't necessarily want to hear the music we grew up on, but I'm making them learn it. You may not appreciate it today, but one day you will.